Over the last week, we made 19 of the 131 recipes found in Africana by Lorado Uma Shaler. Five mains, seven sides, six dependencies, and one drink. I don't know what to do with my body. Lorado describes Africana as a celebration of modern African cookery, and it takes a pan-African approach exploring flavors and techniques of many regional cuisines, often from countries where she's lived or traveled. Born in Nigeria, Lorado spent much of her childhood exploring and eating her way across Africa with her family and falling in love with cooking. After university, that passion turned into weekly food columns, a cookery show, cooking courses, and a supper club with a focus on introducing folks to the vast array of cuisines found across Africa. As Lorado's first cookbook, Africana is not meant to be an exhaustive view into all of those cuisines, but a jumping off point to inspire exploration. It's like literal fondant potatoes. My personal favorite cookbook so far is In Bibi's Kitchen, another multicultural African cookbook. And so I went into this review with high hopes and Africana absolutely delivered, but not without a few hitches. We're gonna make the mango and lime piri piri chicken and the mango and cabbage slaw. I uh, went ahead and I marinated the chicken overnight. So we just have to let this come to room temperature. And while that's going, I'm just gonna make the coleslaw. So I think this is gonna be a fairly easy day. Let's get cooking. I've never seen a stem this big. Let's see if I can do it cleaner this time. Just give it a little massage. Taste and season until you fall in love with it is a great instruction. I think I've got all my dependencies now, so let's start the oven. Half a red cabbage, half a red onion. Let's try to julienne some uh, mango. I'm just gonna do it one at a time. All right, babies. Why do you spell hibiscus? Look at her go. This looks phenomenal. I love purple cabbage in general. I just think it brightens everything up, but the purple with the orange contrast of everything is like excellent. What is the? That's mango. Oh, it's mango shreds. It said Julienne the mangoes. And I was like, I It <laughs> almost looks like there's sauce drizzled through it. I was like, this is gonna be fun <laughs> trying to Julienne these mangoes because yeah. they were really- <laughs> Really soft? Really soft. Juicy is all hell though. Sorry. Very orangey flavor. Not a lot of heat coming out of no. the the base version. Not as strong as I was hoping for. Yeah, oh. I was really hoping for it to there be came some heat. a little bit stronger than what we're getting. It's quite sweet. She did make a note, I believe, that like the sweetness is gonna be dependent exclusively on how ripe your mangoes are. Right, and I had some very ripe mangoes, so. Got it. I do think it needs quite a bit of sauce to like liven up the party. What's going on with your chicken I'm there, just, babe? you know, demolishing it slowly. <laughs> Why do you hate that chicken? I don't know. Yeah, you need quite a bit of the sauce on the side. Mm. It's not a very spicy sauce. I'll give it like a two out of 10. I really like the slaw with it though. The chicken's mm -hmm. like just kind of an average chicken. Right. But the sauce is a smash mm -hmm. and the slaw is a smash. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lime in the marinade. So mm -hmm. I was expecting it to really like break down that bird. Denature it? Yeah. I mean, it has a good texture to it, but the flavor is a little underwhelming. God, I'm sorry, I'm just demolished. I should have gone with the breast, honestly. I don't nervous? know what I'm doing over here. <laughs> I swear to God, I eat normally uh, most <laughs> of the time. For some reason. <laughs> here, I'll feed you baby bird. I am ruining this thigh. Thanks. I'll take this. Thank you. I'll take the grown up meat. There's like a weird color on the bottom from the marinade. I bet it's a reaction with the copper rack you used. <gasps> it might be. It is. I hadn't thought of that. So many things to think about when you're cooking. Not really. 
Just basic physics. Brain. Chemistry. Not really. Just basic physics and chemistry. The breast is actually better than the thigh, which is weird. And I wonder if it's like the amount of skinless surface area because mm. the bottom of the breast. Mm -hmm. A little salt definitely helps. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to make this like a full meal, I would add some rice. I mean, I'd be very pleased if I ate something along these lines at a restaurant. As a meal, smash. Like some yes. herby rice would be incredible Ooh, here. Ooh, herby rice would be really good with this, yeah. With a little bit of salt on the side and definitely the extra piri piri sauce. You will need it. Uh, sweet spicy. That's mm -hmm. how I would describe these two things together. Well, three things together. Spicy, sweet. <laughs> spicy, sweet, chicken. We can do this, I guess. Just. We're doing the mothered oxtail stew, the vanilla mashed potatoes, and braised greens with sweet red peppers. All right, let's get cooking. Make the next step. Now what? Uh, peppers and onions. Once it's taken on a little color, stir in half the carrots, which is all that, all the ginger and garlic, the spices, the tomato puree, and two tablespoons of water, which are already combined. So this is your next step, all of it in. I just seasoned it, and then you cover with a lid and cook for five minutes. Here we go. So Romano peppers aren't really something we can get around here as far as I can tell. So I'm subbing in, instead of three Romano peppers, one bell pepper and two Fresno. That should be about the same mass and about the same flavor. That's it for the greens. What the fuck is this? Potatoes started. Tender, falling off the bone, connective tissue is still intact. So it needs to go for another probably hour. Oh. Wild combination of flavors. Yeah, it's like literal fondant. Ooh, baby. What a day. What a day indeed. This took a little bit longer than three or four hours, but... We targeted five hours, and what did we get? Six hours. Right, oxtails... You want to give them time? There's two types of connective tissue. One of them breaks down at like three hours, the other takes a long time. Uh, that's all we were waiting on. Cool. Should we try it? Yeah. Mm. It's spicy. It's tender. Very tomato. It's fatty. But the fat is like mm. nicely broken down too. It's not like there's some spots that are. It's there, but there's no tooth to it. Right. It just it melts in your mouth. This is definitely one that you're going to want to make with other people. I mean, if you have the time. The extra help definitely went a long way. Yeah. It'll reduce stress significantly. Mm -hmm. The vanilla mashed potatoes are so interesting with this. They're so weird, but I love them. Because there's like a slight sweetness, but I think the spiciness and the tomato cuts through that sweetness so that it's not as like, but it's not as like um, frosting-y. It's frosting texture, frosting flavor, no sugar. Right. Like there's not actual sweetness. I think the vanilla is just like tricking us into thinking it's sweet. This is like scarf worthy, all of it together. The greens are so spicy and I love them. Mm -mm -mm. The, the fatty meat with the rich, but like not, they're pretty lean potatoes. They're not like fatty mm -hmm. potatoes. Everything balances out so well. Yeah. The bitterness and the, the heat of mm -hmm. the greens, mm -hmm. phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's like the best roast you've ever had. Absolute showstopper. If you get this book, get it just for these three recipes. I've never had vanilla bean potato, mashed potatoes before. Them by themselves, a little much. Mm -hmm. But if you combine them with the tomatoes, the acidic tomatoes, the spicy greens, the fatty richness of that like oxtail, mm -hmm. it adds that like nice sweetness to like cut through some of that like intensity. The carrots contribute sweetness. 
The tomatoes contribute acid. Everything is like in balance. It's great. This is like the best version of beef bourguignon you've ever had. Ooh. But like ratchet it up. I'm mad that I haven't had this before in my life. This is like the pinnacle, like the epitome of a 10. This might genuinely be my favorite meal that I've eaten. If you can cook like this at home, there is no need for Michelin star restaurants. This is like Christmas dish. Right. Oh my God, the best Christmas dish. Mm -hmm. I need a break. I need a cigarette. I don't smoke. Third meal cooking out of Africana by Lorato Umashelor, and we are making langouste a la vanille, which is lobster in like rum, butter, and vanilla. And then we're also making beret potatoes. Let's get cooking. First thing we need to make is nita kibe, like a spiced ghee or like clarified butter, but it's toasted a little bit more than a clarified butter would be. This calls for a cinnamon stick. I like to buy my cinnamon in flats. I think they're easier to work with. They're easier to like cut right away or whatever else. One teaspoon Ethiopian cardamom seed. Whoa. It's a little more pungent than what I mean. I'm seeing some more mold down in here, so let's get rid of these guys. Getting really strong mold smells out of this bag. Ooh. It's calling for a blend of dried chilies. Those were bad. I'm gonna call an audible on this and just use some other chilies that fit the descriptions used. One tablespoon coriander seeds and then separately two tablespoons coriander, two teaspoons coriander seeds. That seems like a misprint to me. Like when they said 500 kilograms of potatoes. Audible number two is actually fuck the chili. It's just too wet. So I don't know what that's about, but it's annoying. Paprika, Aleppo would work well. Lean towards keeping it simple though. Get everything will to a consistent texture. I often substitute whole dried chilies with half chili powder and half paprika as well. Well, that's why you read the prefix. Could have done that a lot easier. Normally, I would run this through some more cheesecloth until it was very, very clear, but I just ran out of cheesecloth. So, this is gonna have to work. Here, make an insane amount for this one thing. So I think there's been a misprint. One, it called for 500 kilograms of potatoes, which definitely can't be. So I put in 500 grams, but it also calls for 500 grams of spinach. This isn't a third of that, and that is just gonna be too much. This is a potato dish. I think it should be 50 grams. I think that's the intention. So I'm gonna switch to that. I think there's just some editing issues in this book. This looks beautiful. Thanks. Uh, this recipe, extremely easy. Oh, like, the- Easiest shrimp recipe. The like, shrimp recipe is easy. For this level of decadence, super easy. Now you're supposed to make it with lobster tails, which sounds even more kind of insane to me. <laughs> um, I mean, already you've got vanilla in here and macroot lime and butter galore. It's very rich. I overcooked the shrimp a bit. That butter sauce is incredible. Wow. There's lime in the butter sauce also, but mm. I think fresh lime on top of that would be nice. I really get the vanilla. Yeah. I obviously get that like richness of the butter. The mercurit lime is coming through really nicely, like delicately. Mm -hmm. And I can taste the spices um, that you used here. Isn't this a spice? Pepper? Pepper, that's what I'm tasting. There is garlic in there, and there is uh, Fresno chili. So it's oh. like spicy. Lobster would be insane. Mm -hmm. The vanilla and the mercurit stand out to me the most, which is exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. This is like date, date night dinner. Yeah. I couldn't get lobster tails today because they were frozen at our local mm. fishmonger. So I couldn't get them and cook them in time. The alternates were langoustines, which they didn't have, and tiger prawns. And I wow. enjoy that. I think the only thing that stands out to me as being out of bounds is there's a, like a little too much rum. Mm. Either way, happy with it. They also suggested making it with wine instead, which mm. seems like a totally different sauce. Like a white wine? I don't remember what it said. I think it said white or red. I'm gonna get us new plates for the potatoes. I kind of want to try the potatoes with the shrimp. I think that's a gnarly dude. 
So these guys were a pain in the ass for some potatoes, carrots, and spinach. Like half a kilo of nita kibe, which is like the spiced clarified butter. And you have to make like a couple hundred grams of bebre. Mm -hmm. Like this would have all gone so much faster had those been like either minified versions to like fit into the recipe mm -hmm. or um, more clearly just like ideal versions. I don't know, like having to prep half a pantry it. for one dish. I don't yeah. Know. I'm gonna try it with a shrimp bucket. Oh, that's not good. They're opposites, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? One is like very hearty and one is like so delicate. This is like Sunday roast potatoes on the mm. side. They're very hearty, they're very rugged. Extremely hearty. They're yeah. just stewed potatoes yep. and carrots with some spinach in it. The flavors on everything so far have been solid. Smash on both of these things Smash. separately. Right. This with kitfo oh, yeah. would be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, or shekla tibs or whatever. Like, like I could see how this would be like a really nice intro to Ethiopian food through a, a view of like steak and potatoes or like these like very classic stereotypical American dishes. Yep. You could be like, oh, if I like squint at it, it's this flavor I know well. Mm -hmm. But not together. Don't do these. <laughs> Don't do them together. Don't do these two together. This isn't like this a is... surf and turf situation. <laughs> this, this did not. I mean, the two dishes separately did well. Yes. The two dishes together did not do well. Do I think recommend. with an herb salad, those shrimp would be incredible. Yeah. If mm. you do the beverage potatoes, serve them with something roasted. Right. There are several roasty and stewy things in this book. Mm -hmm. If you do... Langusta la vanille. If you do the vanilla lobster, pair it with either just very neutral potatoes and or herb salad. E oh, sorry. What? Uh, this is meal three, four? Meal four working out of Africana. We're gonna make the red rice and beans and the African grain salad. First thing we have to do is soft boil some eggs. So let's get cooking. Let's make sure I remember how to soft boil eggs. I like to use the Serious Eat soft boiled egg recipe. So I think it turns out better for me most of the time. Why are we roughly chopping them if we are just throwing them in the food processor? Does that make sense? 2.5 gram piece of ginger. I think this is a typo. Is this two and a half grams? That's two grams of ginger. It seems like there should be more, but we'll see if that does a thing. One fat garlic clove. Trimmed and cut into tiny cubes. Ah! Peanut butter quadratini. I don't think these got cooked fully. We're gonna try again. We're gonna see if this will puree. I assumed that you could adjust the speed on this thing, but it is one speed for the food processor. Cool, cool, cool. Probably should have used a bigger pot for those beans, but oh well. I think we're all out of cheesecloth, so we're going to do Actually, this might be a little bit too big. That'll work. More of a hard boiled egg than a soft boiled egg. That's good though. I have two more eggs. I can try again. There's a lot of jalapenos, so this is gonna be spicy. Did it work? Hmm? Huh? Soft-ish. It's like jammy. We're gonna go with it. What do we got here? Okay. This is grains on grains. We've got a grain salad, and then we have the Rice, but I kind of want to see if you can identify flavors. I immediately see pomegranate, cucumber, tomato, parsley. What's the grain? Gari. Gari, right, the cassava. It's very much like a tabbouleh. The gari is an interesting texture. It's much finer than you get with like couscous or bulgur. And I like it. She like massages the gari with stock. So this is the thing I'm most concerned about because I don't like kidney beans or beets, but I'm going in. Not terribly exciting. Let's see how that is with the eggs. The, the texture of the kidney beans isn't as bad as I was concerned about. Mm. I like I, the coconut oil at the end. Oh, interesting. Mutes, there is coconut for sure. Yeah, mutes a lot of the other flavors. So you're getting like more coconut flavor than anything else. It's supposed to be kind of like a sticky rice. Are there pieces of beet in here or is it like ground up? 
pureed. It is better with the eggs. They go really well together. I mean, as far as the lunch goes, this is good. It just took a long time. And the only reason it right. took a long time was because of the fucking eggs. If I hadn't done those three times, then it would have been. The eggs are your spice blend from yesterday. Mm -hmm. I would definitely But do... she doesn't give you a recipe for the soft boiled eggs either. She just kind of has you say like, oh, soft boiled eggs. The grain salad is delicious. I think this is a better grain than couscous or bulgur for tabbouleh. Mm. The beans and rice, just, I could miss those. Individually, light smashes. I think together it's a smash because you've got the brightness of the salad with mm. the like denseness of the rice. And I think they balance each other pretty well. Smash on the combination. I would rather just have the grain salad personally. It doesn't taste like beets though. Nice. The egg definitely helps. That was one of the cases, the very few cases where I was glad to have an egg there. Today is just an extra fun day. We're gonna make the black pepper and vanilla chai shortbread and the Kenyan masala chai. But I need to dry off my spice grinder. Girl, these look almost as delicious as you. Thanks, babe. Do you want to try this chai first? It's hot, so. The old chai chai? That is delicious. Oh my god. It has like the right texture. Yeah. Like I find that chai is often so thin, but it needs a little bit of sugar to add some body. This yep. has the right amount. It's not too sweet, but it does have. I, to be fair, I added sugar at the end. It was mm. extremely bland without it and like did not have the same like coating that right. I wanted. So I added the sugar at the end. But ah, to be fair, she does it. say add sweetness, add your desired sweetness to it. So I was like, well, here we go. Let's do it. But I think that's extremely tasty. Yeah, that delicious. is That is what I want in a chai. Okay, are you guessing Clove? what else is in there? Black pepper. A little bit of black pepper. Mm -hmm. There's definitely milk, like it's ginger. Ginger. Is there anise in here? It doesn't no. smell like anise. No anise. Cardamom? There's cardamom. Nothing else stands out to me. You wanna taste the cinnamon? Like it doesn't stand out. It's really? Not like a key huh. component, no. There's like two big sticks of cinnamon tossed in. Try one of these cookies. It's a shortbread, so it should have like a little bit of a crisp. Like mm -hmm. a... Basically pie crust. It came together very similar to pie crust. Like you really have to like work it. Oh really? Mm-hmm. I like the spices on top. Yeah. The the pastry itself isn't um, seasoned enough for me. Mm. Interesting. And I also generally just like I'm not a huge like short pastry person. A high Damn. pH thing going on, maybe like baking soda or baking powder or something along those lines. Nope. What's the? Am I just tasting flour? It's it's Corn starch? it has like a bitterness to it. I mean, yeah. It is this is actually is pretty good without any sweetening. I guess it tastes quite bitter now. Is the sweetening in the pot? Yeah, it's in the whole pot. After eating those, I'm like mostly tasting black tea now. Together, I think these two mm -hmm. are a smash. Separately, they're fine. It's really stuck in your teeth. Yep. My teeth are chock full of cookie right now. It's driving me insane. They do do that. Lorado really goes out of her way to give substitutions for any of those hard to find ingredients. But being that she's based in the UK and we're based in the US, some of the substitutions that she offers don't necessarily translate. So Romano peppers aren't really something we can get around here as far as I can tell. So I'm subbing in, instead of three Romano peppers, one bell pepper and two Fresno. That should be about the same mass and about the same flavor. The biggest challenges, as always, are fresh produce, since most dried and canned ingredients can be found online. This week, the hardest items for us to find were scotch bonnets and Romano peppers. As with most UK-based authors, you'll see terms like grill, used for what Americans would call a broiler, and measurements are in grams and milliliters. But she does have a conversion chart in the back of the book. 
for cowards. Overall though, it was pretty smooth sailing and the only unique equipment that we needed was a kitchen scale, a spice grinder, and a food processor. She provides clear guides to most of the techniques and the average time per dish was pretty reasonable at just over one hour. All of that adds up to an accessibility score of eight. Format wise, the book is pretty typical, but with some beautiful flourishes throughout. The only thing that we struggled with was the typography, particularly where there are long lists of substitutions and a mix of type styles that made it harder to scan while cooking. I often substitute whole dried chilies with half chili powder and half paprika as well. Well, that's why you read the prefix. Could've done that a lot easier. As a side note, the version that we got had a pretty boring dust jacket that we quickly threw away to find an even blander hardcover. I think it's just the US version that looks like this, which is such a pity because the UK version looks so beautiful. Design gets a six. Africana taught us whole new uses for a number of different ingredients, but vanilla bean is the real standout. Wow. In the US at least, vanilla is pretty exclusively used for sweet things, but this book asked us to use it in things like mashed potatoes and prawns, and that just really opened up our eyes to how versatile and impactful an ingredient truly is. This is like date date night dinner. Yeah. It's frosting texture, frosting flavor, no sugar. This is like scarf worthy. While the flavors in this book didn't always blow our socks off quite as much as the vanilla bean did, all but one of the dishes that we made from this book were smashes. Smash on both of these things smash. separately. Right. Together, I think these two mm -hmm. are a smash. As a meal, smash. I think together it's a smash. The beans and rice just, I could miss those. And at least one of Lorado's suggested pairings, mother oxtails with vanilla mashed potatoes and the braised greens, was genuinely among the best things we've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. It was like the best roast you've ever had. Absolute showstopper. Flavor is an eight. Cookbook writing is a fucking art and I applaud anyone who takes on that challenge. Taste and season until you fall in love with it is a great instruction. Unfortunately, we ran into a handful of errors that I know would be heartbreaking for us to see had we written a book, especially since they were in a lot of the ingredient lists. One tablespoon coriander seeds and then separately two tablespoons coriander, two teaspoons coriander seeds. That seems like a misprint to me. In some cases, those errors took what was apparently supposed to be a pound of potatoes and turned it into half a ton of potatoes. It called for 500 kilograms of potatoes, which definitely can't be. So I put in 500 grams, but it also calls for 500 grams of spinach. This isn't a third of that, and that is just gonna be too much. This is a potato dish. In others, it took a couple of tablespoons of ginger and turned it into less than a teaspoon. 2.5 gram piece of ginger. I think this is a typo. It seems like there should be more, but we'll, we'll go with three grams. In most cases, we easily figured out the intention from context clues like serving sizes and recommended cooking vessels. They wanted another, whatever, 30% in a soft pan. Like that's just not a thing that's gonna happen. But I think for many home cooks, especially folks who are just getting into this type of cuisine, this is a tall order. If you're experienced enough to cook intuitively like a Lorado advocates for throughout this book, then this probably won't be a problem for you, but it's still good to know about either way. Writing gets a three. Being a good cook and getting a cookbook written well is just totally different skill sets. Lastly, we have value. And as we always say, if we can get three smashes out of our week, then it's worth the price of admission. This book gave us 12 smashes out of the 13 dishes tested this week, and a handful of them were truly phenomenal. If you can cook like this at home, there is no need for Michelin star restaurants. On top of that, we got to explore all those new flavors in an approachable way and at an average price per serving of $8.44. Even when you include ingredients like rum, vanilla beans, and seafood. Value is a 10, which brings our initial cult score to seven. Any cookbook that encompasses one cuisine would be an achievement. To write a cookbook that covers so many cuisines, makes them approachable to newcomers, and truly delivers on flavor, even if there are some bumps along the way, is a book that we will be coming back to for a very long time. Thank you so much, Lorado, for sharing this with us. Life-changing experience.